Hey guys, Brendo New Productions here, and in this tutorial, I'm actually going to teach you guys how to make your own .dll library in Visual Basic 2010 edition, well, Express edition. All right, so um, uh, just wanted to tell you guys that I'm going to be able to do this. I wasn't able to do it in one part before, but now I'm going to be able to since YouTube allotted me a 15-minute uploaded upload time instead of a 10-minute uh, upload time. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, start making this tutorial now. Alright, so when making a .dll file, the first thing you'll probably notice is we don't want a Windows Forms application. We actually want a class library, which is a project for creating a .dll. Alright, so I'm just going to name it YouTube. Now, a .dll can be used to contain um, many different uh, commands that a different application can use. So in this tutorial, I'll also be talking about how to input a dot or import a .dll file that you created into your project. All right. So once we open up the .dll file, all we have is a public class. If you notice, we don't have anything visual to work with. Well, that's simply because it's a .dll file and it doesn't have any actual graphical user interface. So what we're going to do is actually start setting up our own subs. Now we're we're just going to set up a class that uh let's say downloads a file from the internet. Okay. So I'm actually going to go into the internet right now and get a random file to download here so let's see um... there we go we're going to go to brandonsoft.com slash twit control alright and once we're here we're gonna uh... press download no wait we want to uh... copy link location so if we paste that good that's what we want so we've got our link and we're going to actually set up the class so in a class, you're going to want to create several subs, which we learned to do in our How to Create Your Own Sub tutorial. So what you're going to do is type sub, and then the first thing we want to do is check if the user has internet. So we're going to do sub check internet. And um, we're going to say if my.computer.network is available. So if the network is available, then. But if it's not available, then. And we're actually going to make a boolean right here. And it's going to be false by default. And But if the computer is available, then it's going to change internet to true. And then it's going to change internet to false if the internet is not available. So there's our first sub to check the internet. Our next sub should be to, let's just say, download the file. So we're going to say sub download file. And then we're going to declare a parameter. So we're going to say byval file as system.io.file stream. Okay. So what this is doing is just declaring a new sub called download file where when we open up the sub in our uh, program, we're going to have to input a file as a file stream. So um, the download file, first thing it's going to do is check if internet equals true, then. So if the internet equals true, then. But if it doesn't, we want to check the internet again. That sounds good, right? But if the internet is up and running, we're actually going to start downloading the file. So we just want to do my dot uh, computer. No, my dot yeah computer dot network dot download file we're going to say file uh, to download it from destination we're going to do my.application.info.directorypath plus um, actually what we're going to do is we're actually going to make a also another byval so we need to make a comma and then byval uh, location as string so what we're going to do here is we're going to download the declared file and we're going to save it in the declared location. And there's several other parameters we can uh, address such as username which we don't need, password we don't need, show UI. This is going to show a progress bar for the download so that'll be cool. Uh, connection timeout, I'm just going to make it 9999. Overwrite, if the file exists we are going to overwrite it. And uh, there we go. Well, now we got to figure out what 
I think for username and password, we just need to enter blanks. And then delete this comma. And maybe even delete this one. Add quotations there. Okay, so let's just uh, download the file. <laughs> Wait a second. This is so complicated. <laughs> okay, well, what we want to do is actually, uh, actually, where it says bivalve file as system.io, we're just going to do bivalve file as string. And then it'll download the file of file and location, right? So then, once that's downloaded, we actually want to check if the uh, file is there. So we're actually going to make a new sub, sub, check file. And then we want to say bival file as string. And we're just going to use the my.computer. So, first of all, if my.computer.filesystem.file exists, so if the specified file exists, then we are going to do nothing. But if it doesn't exist, we're going to run download file. With file as the no. And if it doesn't exist, we're going to say message box download corrupt. So this is just basic error checking right here. So if it doesn't exist, we're going to say the download's corrupt. But if it does exist, then uh, it's all good. And then we're going to make one more uh, sub run file by val file as string. And then we're just going to say um. Uh, shell, which is the the run another another program inside your program, and then we're gonna run file, right? All right. So this DLL looks like it's all good. It'll check the internet, download the file, check if the file exists, and if it does, uh, then we are going to run the file. But if it does not exist, it'll tell us that the download is corrupt. So what we're gonna do is press file, uh, save all. I'm just going to save it as YouTube. And once that's saved, you just want to build it. Alright, so then once it's done, you can actually uh, go to that directory, which I'm going to do now. And it should be there. So here it is, YouTube. Bin, release. And there it is, YouTube.dll. So that's cool. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is actually create a program to interface with our DLL file. So this is just going to be a Windows application, Windows Forms application, and um, I'm going to name it YouTube User. So it uses YouTube. And um, the first thing we're going to do is actually change the te text of the form to be YouTube User, and then we're going to have it so it does not show the icon. And we're going to have it so the maximize box doesn't exist. Alright, and once uh, this is set up, we can actually start setting it up. So the first thing we need to do to import our DLL into our actual project is go to Project, and then Add Reference. Then we just want to press the Browse tab up at the top, and find our DLL file. So there it is. And then once you've done that, it doesn't look like it's done anything, but it's actually added it to the program's uh, information. And then we want to import the DLL file into our program. So we're going to type imports, and then youtube.class1, which is the class we created in the DLL file. And then on top of all that, we are going to public a variable, public you, uh, download as YouTube dot class one. Okay. Now, once we've declared a variable to um, represent our YouTube dot class one, we can go back into our form and uh, insert the information fields where the information needed to be submitted. So, for example, label one is going to be uh, URL of file, label two, directory to download to. And once that's done, we can have a button that says 
download. And we're going to have two text boxes. Text box one dot text and text box two dot text. So the user can actually input this information. So the first thing you want to do is when they double click the download file, you want to see if uh, the internet exists. So we want to do download dot check internet. And as you remember when we uh, coded the file, all this does is just checks the internet. <laughs> That's all it does. So once we're done checking the internet, we can actually uh, download the file. So we're just going to want to type download, which is the variable we saved, and then dot the subname, which is download file. And then it asks for the file as string, so that's going to be the text box one dot text, and then the location is string text box one two dot text. And if you noticed where it says uh, location and file as string, we actually declared those when we coded the uh, actual dot dll file. All right, and once the uh, file is downloaded, we're going to check if it exists. So download dot check file. Um, file as string. So that's going to be text box two dot text. And then uh, once we're done with all that, we're just going to say download dot run file. And the file is again going to be text box two dot text. All right, so once we have our DLLs, uh, our DLL saved, and then our program saved to communicate with the DLL, uh, we can go ahead and build it and actually run it. And once we run it, it just looks like a normal uh, program. But for the URL, we are going to paste in the URL we copied in the beginning of the video, and then we're going to download to the C drive and setup.zip. Then we're just going to press the download button. And uh, it looks like download.checkinternet didn't like us. So there must have been a mistake we made while coding the .dll. Um, if you found the mistake, go ahead and post it in the comments. But since I'm running out of time, I'm just going to skip that step because I know my internet's up. So once again, I'm going to run the program. And um, this is the file that's going to be downloaded. And I want to download it to C, setup.zip. And then we press download. And uh, there we go. I got another error. I think it's because we need to say public download as new YouTube.glass1. So let's try that again. URL, paste that, and then we're going to save to C, setup.zip, download. Uh, and it says download corrupt. So that's cool. We actually got the. Uh, we actually got the download corrupt to work. So apparently it didn't like that file. Now, um, actually this works out quite well because it would download the file, but my website has it set to I cannot download files from a third party program. So I forgot about that, but that works out great. So it cannot download the file and it cannot find it. So uh, it gives us the message download corrupt. So yeah, this is the uh, crude tutorial on how to create a .dll file and how to make it communicate with a program. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and hope you uh, have better luck at this than I did without all the uh, errors. So the code for this will be on Pastebin later and the link for that will be in the description. Make sure you comment if you have any better solutions to this problem. And um, make sure you rate, comment, and subscribe. Alright, I will see you in my future videos. Uh, have a great day.